My name is Christopher Hart, and I am the chairman of the National Transportation Safety Board. I have served with Robert on the board for several years, and I'm happy to take this opportunity to congratulate him for receiving this award. One word that I associate with Robert is passion. As one example of many, he demonstrates his passion with his knowledge that pilot error is only the beginning of the inquiry and not the end, and that what pilots do in the moment depends heavily not only upon the individual, but also upon the equipment, the organization, and the circumstances. Robert is passionate about looking into the equipment, the organization, and the circumstances to learn why a proud, competent professional did something that resulted in injury or damage, and to apply that learning to continue improving safety in the future. Congratulations, Robert, on receiving the Cecile S. Hatfield Award. It's very well deserved. Robert Sumwalt, the recipient of the 2017 Cecile S. Hatfield Award, is a man who is doing something to which many of us aspire, but few achieve. Robert Sumwalt is following his passion and living his dream. This is his story. Robert likes to say that he got into aviation by accident. There was a plane crash at his local airport in his hometown of Columbia, South Carolina, when Robert was 17. Already a curious and adventurous soul, Robert set out to find the site and boldly walked onto the scene acting like he knew what he was doing. This King Air accident that claimed two lives fascinated Robert. He was hooked, intrigued by the accident and airplanes. A few weeks later, he stopped by the airport to sign up for flying lessons and received his private pilot certificate only four months later. Though Robert looks to this as an accidental discovery of what was to become both his passion and his life's work, many who know Robert believe differently. They believe that Robert's commitment to aviation, to safety, and to accident investigation was his destiny, his fate. They believe this because his demonstrated passion, energy, and dedication could not have been accidental and his professional contributions and achievements in the field have been so significant that his role was predestined. My earliest memory of Robert was high school. He was a couple years older than me and was getting his pilot's license, which for a teenager in Little Columbia, South Carolina, was simply unheard of. Most folks were impressed if you got your driver's license early. Robert inspired me to also get my pilot's license in high school, and I remember training at the airport during the summer and seeing him flying a Cessna 401, which to me at the time was the equivalent of a corporate jet. I thought he was the coolest. The other thing about Robert is that the world is full of cowboys who view safety practices as something for sissies. I admire most about Robert. His fearless drive has been to eliminate that cowboy attitude in the pilot ranks. So, Robert's story really began on his birthday, June 30th, 1956 the same day that a TWA Super Constellation and a United Airlines DC-7 collided mid-air over the Grand Canyon, killing 128. This crash not only brought sweeping changes to the air traffic control procedures, but clearly pointed to the need for more scientific aviation accident investigation protocols. Fifty years to the day, and many professional achievements later, Robert was appointed by the President as member and vice chairman of the NTSB. And that was no accident. His appointment to the NTSB was the realization of his lifelong dream and the culmination of many years of dedicated service in progressively responsible positions, all focused on his gripping passion for aviation safety. It started in his college years at the University of South Carolina, where he diligently pursued his aviation aspirations. As a mere freshman, he convinced the university to establish the first USC Flying Club and to purchase its first plane, a used 1970 Cessna 150. He emerged as the leader of this organization. He regularly used the university library to study NTSB aviation accident reports between classes and also managed to turn almost every assignment in business school into a study of the business of aviation. This razor-sharp focus led to his first full-time paid position. USC hired him to fly their rented twin-engine Aero Commander until they soon purchased a new Piper Navajo Chieftain. Quite a position for a 22-year-old recent college graduate. 
This was just the beginning. Robert applied to Piedmont Airlines and landed a coveted position as a pilot. 5,700 applied for the position, 10 were hired. In record time, he was promoted to Piedmont's chief flight engineer. He was then asked to onboard Piedmont's new Fokker F-28's fleet into scheduled service. This involved training in the Netherlands, writing the aircraft manuals, developing training curricula, and training pilots. After the first three airplanes were delivered, he went back to line flying as captain of the F-28. Less than two years later, he was promoted to captain on the Boeing 737. Robert always had a desire to improve the aviation industry, to make it better than he found it, and he acted on that desire. While accumulating over 14,000 flight hours as a captain at U.S. Air, he expanded his role in the Airline Pilots Association, later serving as chairman of ALPA's Human Factors and Training Group. He used his vacation time to attend an NTSB accident investigation course, which led to his assisting in accident investigations for U.S. Air, who had bought out Piedmont. Robert contributed heavily to the development of U.S. Airways Altitude Awareness Program, and he co-founded the ALPA Critical Incident Response Program, a program that remains in place today. During the 90s, Robert conducted three major research projects for NASA's Aviation Safety Reporting System and wrote articles for their publications. In early 2000s, he began teaching at the University of Southern California's Aviation Safety and Security Program, where he was the primary human factors instructor. Robert loved to be a positive influence. Robert loved teaching. As aviation leaders, I suggest that not only do we have the ability to influence safety, but we have the obligation to do so as well. And speaking up and saying something about a deviation is it's hard, it's unpopular. But remember, progress has most frequently resulted from people who took unpopular positions. In 2004, leaders of a South Carolina energy company, Scana, lured him away from the nearly bankrupt U.S. Airways to lead their troubled flight department. He quickly transformed the Scana flight culture and professionalized the craft by raising the bar on everyone, including himself. Midway through his employment at Scana, Robert received the 2005 Air Safety Award at ALPA's Air Safety Banquet. After the ceremony, Robert joined a longtime colleague in the Hyatt Bar. Here, he learned that there was an opening at the NTSB, Robert's dream job. He and his friend, Captain Bill Weeks, better known to each other as Willie and Roberto, sat in that bar and sketched out a plan to go after the NTSB position on the back of a cocktail napkin. And the plan worked. In 2006, after many grueling interviews with White House officials and FBI agents, then-President George W. Bush appointed Robert to the NTSB as the 37th member and the NTSB vice chairman. During his tenure, Robert responded to over 20 major transportation events as part of NTSB's elite GO team. In the Asiana Flight 214 crash in San Francisco, Robert's dissenting statement revealed the role that pilot expectancy played in the crash. The pilot expected the auto throttle to intervene on final approach while in the hold mode. It doesn't. Yet this nuance of the 777 automation was not understood until Robert publicly elevated the inconsistency. As NTSB member, he conducted over 60 on-scene media briefings. He provided individual and collective review of over 150 major transportation investigations. He served as NTSB's Chairman of the Board of Inquiry for five high-profile accident public hearings, including the Miracle on the Hudson. He presented over 125 speeches domestically and internationally. He testified as subject matter expert in congressional hearings on transportation safety issues. Through all of this, Robert honed a reputation for himself with deliberation and care. You know, I believe that having integrity is a very important trait, and I, I try to, to practice integrity. I speak what's on my mind, and I do what I believe is right. 
in board meetings, I say things and ask tough questions that others don't. I have written concurring and dissenting opinions that, frankly, make others squirm. But I speak the truth. And you know, sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. Robert Sumwalt is an exemplary pilot, a conscientious board member, and a consummate gentleman. As a pilot, he knew Robert was always going to follow every checklist. As a board member, he would leave no stone unturned. He respected the process, and he made sure we got it right every time. And as a human being, Robert cares. He cared about the victims and their families on scene, and he cares about his colleagues. This is what makes him the perfect recipient of this award. Congratulations. When I was five, my sister Elizabeth and I, we stood on a stage with my grandfather at some, oh, some big deal University of South Carolina ceremony. You know, I was of course eager to lose the fake tie and get to the refreshments, but Elizabeth and I had important duty to attend to first. You see, at the appointed time, we were to pull a string that would unveil a plaque that officially named USC's engineering school, the Robert L. Sumwalt College of Engineering. Bob, as we called him, began teaching engineering at the university in 1926. He later became the dean of engineering and then ultimately rose to become the president of the University of South Carolina. And I always felt that's not bad for someone who grew up so poor that his parents had to send him to live with relatives. His influence in my life was so powerful, as, as well as my dad's. They both had graduate engineering degrees from MIT, so there was no doubt what I would do when I grew up. I would be an engineer. And, as we now know, Robert did not become an engineer. Thankfully, his grandfather lived by his convictions and shared them with Robert. The secret to life, life is, is very, very simple, simple, Robert. Do what you love, do it well, and do it with passion. While Robert followed his grandfather's and father's footsteps to the University of South Carolina, he graduated with a degree in business administration. And always a continuous learner, in 2014, he earned a Master's of Aeronautical Science from Embry-Riddle. During his career, he published over 90 articles and papers in industry magazines. He co-authored a book on accident analysis and developed and taught a course on human factors in aviation safety. Robert's contributions to the field were highly recognized with numerous awards. Robert's career even provided inspiration for this sonnet, written and read by Robert's good friend and colleague, Jim Schultz. You know, we can all attest to Robert's grace, class, and professional demeanor, but those of us that know him well have also seen wrath unleashed when certain boundaries are crossed. And so it was early in the summer of 2014 at a local restaurant, and he was enjoying one of his favorite meals, hamburger and french fries. As he was calmly sitting there enjoying his meal, a young man walked by the table. He reached out and actually grabbed a handful of Robert's french fries as he passed by. It was a big mistake, because as the drive-by Fry thief walked on. Robert jumped to his feet, pursued the wrongdoer, and confronted him nose to nose, toe to toe, reprimanding him for the appalling French fry theft. So here's a little sonnet I wrote that tells the story of my friend Robert Sumwald. I call it Don't Mess With His Fries. A man of conviction, hard work, and pride, Robert is a chap you want on your side. An aviation hall of famer who once lined the skies with contrails and vortices from jets he did fly. Then on to lead, teach and prescribe, ways to keep people safe when taking a train or jet ride. Now known widely as a leadership guru, lecturer, mentor, and personal celebrity too. Even though a man of dignity and one of grace, there is one thing with him you don't want to face. Specifically, be aware when he is nibbling his dinner, not to mess with him then, or you'll not be a winner. One lad did so, helping himself to Robert's taters, prompting a loud you a whole response, even stunning the waiters. So here it is, a word to the wise, when Robert is eating, don't mess with his fries. I love you, brother. Congratulations on this incredible award. Robert has accumulated many friends and many accolades during his career. 
Robert was once described to me as the one man in the room who won't be afraid to swim against the tide of opinion. He is indeed a man of conviction, a man of integrity, a man of high ideals, and a man with one of the hardest qualities to possess while in public office, humility. There's a good chance if you put a thousand people who've worked with Robert at some level in a single room, then ask who here is a good friend of Robert Sumwalt, every hand in the room would go up. He has that kind of connection with people, a genuine human connection many have lost in our age of swirling cryptic electrons. Robert's living his dream, but as we know, any actualized dream requires a firm foundation. For Robert, that foundation is his family. Well, I am, I am passionate about my work. I love my work, but I'm also proud of and love my family immensely. Uh, they are extremely important to me. I've spent way too much time away from them over the years. I've been married to the same wonderful woman, Anne, for 38 years, and our daughter Mackenzie, oh my goodness, <laughs> she is a chip off the old block. She's got a mind of her own, she's pursuing her passions, and she is a free spirit. Congratulations to Robert Sumwalt, a man who's following his passion and living his dream. Congratulations to Robert Sumwalt, the distinguished recipient of the 2017 Cecile S. Hatfield Award. For me, this is not just a passion. This is not just a job. And as corny as it may sound, to me, this is a call. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity to have worked on fulfilling that passion and that calling. I'm so grateful.